Today I will introduce you to the concept of market-based smart grid optimization. I will do this based on a demonstration project called Power Match and City that uh, already has been introduced. Um, I will go through this project and show you how smart grid really look like. And well, I'm not going to give you a, a definition of smart grids because I really think it's the same as giving a definition of the internet. Once you have a smart grid, you have endless possibilities of optimizing the energy system and really are able to introduce new services and products and uh, use all of our assets in the energy system optimally. Um, I noticed that I don't have a pointer to go through the slides. <laughs> um, before I go into detail, I would first like to take you to the background of why we need smart grids. And if we look at one of the major energy trends, is that we see that there's a really growing demand for energy over the next coming decades. And that's mainly being caused by the growth of the population worldwide, and especially in Asia. Another trend that we observe is that there is an electrification of the total energy system. So we move to electric vehicles, and we move to space heating by heat pumps. And this is really going to increase the total energy demand on the electricity grid. Another trend that we observe is the, I would say, the, the already optimum uh, performance of our central power plants. They are almost at the top of their S-curves. They are running at about the maximum theoretical efficiency that they can uh, achieve. And maybe if we do our utmost best, then we can improve that by 1% or 2%. Um, but there's not going to be much more about uh, going to come from the central power plants. And if you look at the new developments by wind and solar power, we really see that we can increase the efficiency of the total energy system and deliver new sources of power to the grid. And they don't only do that from an efficiency point of view, but also will become cost efficient in one or two decades. So we are going to move to a new system where based on decentralized power generation, um, based on wind power and solar power. That is really going to fill the gap between the current power production <laughs> and the en extra energy that is needed in the total system. And this is really going to change the whole energy system. Because the end users will now become not only end users, but they also start producing energy themselves. And they do this as a cost efficient level, so they will be competing with the central power production. And that is really going to increase or uh, to change the whole system. And um, that's where we need smart grids to be able to allow them to really enter the market and find an optimal solution of the total system. Um, if we look at the needs of the different stakeholders in smart grids, then um, at first we, I think, should look at the end user, because they are going to become the central point of the total system. And what they want is reliable, affordable, and sustainable energy at the end of the day. If you look at the grid operators, they have to follow the demand. And looking at the electrification of the system, we can either do two things, we can increase the capacity, which will be very costly, or we can make the system smart, and in that way we can reduce the peak load on the grid and make sure that the system remains affordable. Um, looking at the supplier's perspective, they need to integrate the wind and solar power, and that is really intermittent sources that need a lot of flexibility. And this flexibility should be delivered by demand response, so shifting loads from a point where the sustainable energy is really generated. <coughs> um, another point can be done by storing energy, and here in Norway you have a lot of options to do that by hydropower. And the third one, as I think, is flexible power production by small scale, decentralized energy sources based on CHP concepts which really will enter the homes of people within one or two decades. Um, if you look at the current system, we see that the power is cent produced centrally, and is distributed just and, and is just following the demand of the end users. If we look at the energy profile over a day, then we see two peak times, one in the morning and one in the evening. But as soon as we start introducing, I would say, renewable power, the power will be generated regardless whether there is demand for it. So there is no interplay between demand and supply of energy. And it means that um, we really have to do something to be able to match the demand and supply of energy at the same time. So what you actually want to do is, for example, have your washing machine start working as soon as the wind starts blowing. And in that way, we can use the total system much more efficiently um, by allowing the system to adapt the demand to the supply of, uh, of energy. Um, 
we demonstrate this concept in Power Match in City. It's a demonstration project that we execute in Groningen, in the Netherlands. It's at this time still, I say, quite small. We have 25 households being interconnected, but the power is really generated in a sustainable way. And people are um, offered the possibility to trade their energy on a local energy market, which is really operated in a real-time way. So there is really trading between the households of, uh, of energy. Um, what we really want to do is look at the full concept and demonstrate it in a real-life environment, because we really want to understand all the details of the whole problem. <coughs> and we want to see the practical implementations for the end users, but also want to have a good view on the uh, theoretical model behind it. Because um, we really fully want to understand the whole problem. And that is because the devil is always in the details. Um, looking at the households, the thing really starts at an energy service gateway, which is, is placed in a metering cupboard that is uh, providing the op opportunity to trade energy on this local energy market. And the other thing that you also need is a smart meter to be able to monitor the power production in the homes themselves and um, see how much energy is supplied or de demanded from the grid. Um, what's happening is actually whenever the price is very low, then households are trying to buy power from the grid. And whenever the price rises again, they're trying to sell the power to the back to the grid. And in that way, they try to optimize their own energy portfolio from within the household. So that's a really way, a new way of thinking where um, the households are really trying to optimize their own energy portfolio. Um, how does it look like in practice? We've installed micro CHPs in these households. And these micro CHPs are, I would say, new type of boiler machines which have a generator inside which produce heat and electricity at the same time. And we store this heat in this heat vessel which is shown in the picture left below. And in that way we can generate the power whenever there is a need for power on the grid. And then we use the heat as soon as it's needed for tap water or space heating in the houses. The other part of the power is produced by solar panels. So in that way they have, a, I say, a fully integrated system supplying the power. And these micro CHP supply the power to the grid whenever there is no sun shining or no wind available. Um, if we would fire up these micro CHP with biogas, then I would think we would be able to make the system fully sustainable. And I must admit that at this point of time, we don't uh, have these micro CHPs running on biogas, but we will do that in the next phase. Um, the other thing that we did is that we installed smart appliances in the homes. So we gave all these people um, washing machines and dishwashers that you can program in such a way that they uh, program it that the wash should be uh, finished at, the, for example, 6 o'clock in the evening. And in that way, the intelligence in the system is looking for the moment that the price in the uh, local uh, energy market is low, and at that point, there is a surplus of energy available, and hence, they run mostly on sustainable energy. Similarly, we do that with the electric vehicles in the system. So they charge up when the prices are low in the grid, and make sure that they use most of the, 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 uh, the sustainable energy. Another part of the houses is equipped with uh, hybrid heat pump systems. So that are systems with a condensation boiler combined with a heat pump. And these heat pumps run at the point where um, they run at their optimal efficiency. So they provide the, the heat throughout most of the heating season and running on the, the optimal efficiency of the heat pump itself. But um, they can also perform demand response. And what you see here is an example where the blue line is representing the real-time price in the grid over a day. And whenever you see the price dropping, there you see that the buffers are being filled by the hybrid heat pumps. And in that way, they can absorb the peaks in the wind and solar power, making sure that we can really integrate the renewable energy sources in the system in an efficient way. Um, the condensation boilers, which are equipped with these hybrid heat pump concepts, they fire up as soon as there is an overload on the grid. So in that case, we switch off the heat pump systems and make sure that we generate the heat in the homes with um, these uh, condensing boilers. Um, we do that because we don't want to impact the comfort of the end user, because I don't think that it's yeah, possible to sell the concept of smart grids to end users when we yeah, provide them discomfort. And in this way, you have a very smart solution, I would say, where you can switch between gas-fired and uh, electricity-fired heating in a home. Um, if we look at the total system, there the energy or the, the end users can sell power to the grid whenever there is a need for it, or they can sell it to the neighbors. And um, 
This allows us to integrate it with the renewable sources in the system, and whenever there is a strong demand, they will start selling power back to the grid as soon as uh, there is a, uh, the, the price is increasing. Um, the the um, grid operator also can provide incentives on hotspots on the, on the grid itself. Um, so what they will do is they will increase the price on a hotspot in the grid and, for, the, that for example, increase the local power production to make sure that um, the system doesn't get overloaded in that way. And that is really a way of integrating um, the system based on a market mechanism. And since it's really based on local intelligence in the system, the system is quite scalable and you can interconnect more and more regions to provide more flexibility and really make the whole system fully integrated using all the assets in the system. Um, how the system works is that this energy service gateway that is placed in each of these houses um, provides a local market in the house where, for example, the solar panel will be selling the power to the washing machine or the uh, dishwasher. And whenever there is a balance in between uh, uh, the power generation in the homes, you just have uh, well, a self-supporting system. But of course, you're not always able to do that. So what you will do is then look at your neighbors and see whatever neighbor has a surplus of energy available, allowing you to do the laundry. So in that way, you can create a close community within these uh, households, providing just the power within uh, you know, a local suburb. And you don't want to um, increase, I would say, the uh, reliability of the system. So whenever there is a shortage of the, the energy supply in this grid, then we're looking at the level higher and we're integrating it with a central market and connecting all these neighborhoods together, making sure that we have a fully sustainable system. Um, there are two other stakeholders in the system that also want to use this. And the first one is, again, this uh, distribution system operator looking at a hotspot and wanting to reduce the power production on a distribution station. So. If you then look at the central pies in the system, um, I just show here an example which is not that relevant, but necessary to understand the rest of the, the system. Um, what you see here is the peak load on the distribution station. And we want to cut out the red area, making sure that the load on the system doesn't uh, go above the level of 20 kilowatts. And what we then do is that we adjust the price in the local grid. So only for that area in the grid, we in provide an incentive as the DSO, increasing the price level there, and that is going to um, uh, make sure that at least the generation is being turned up by each of these households, um, reducing the import or need for import of energy in the local part of the grid, but at the same time also the demand is being reduced, because uh, devices that use power um, don't want to use it that, um, yeah, that much anymore because uh, it's become too expensive for them. And in that way, the DSO can optimize the whole system. The other part is the supplier. They really run this whole system as a virtual power plant. So you can imagine that you interconnect all these small generators at these homes. Such a micro CSP has a power of about one kilowatt, but if you have hundreds of thousands of them, you have a size of a big power plant. So if you can use that as, uh, in a coordinated way, you can really build large-scale power plants based on very small um, uh, generators. I have another example where we show how that works. And the red line here in this graph is showing a block price which is representing the day and night tariff in the system. And on the left side you see that all the heat pump systems in, the, in this uh, smart grid start filling the buffers as soon as the price is going to rise because they really want to make sure that the buffers are full and they can uh, at least don't need to buy more power during the time that the price is high as really necessary. So they make sure that they have a filled buffer as soon as the price starts rising and they will empty it during this uh, high price and hopefully they will be able to make it until the price is low again. Um, but that depends on the heat demand in the system. And similarly, you see that for the uh, micro CHPs, they will start producing power at the last point where the price is really high and as soon as the price drops, then they, start, they stop producing energy. Um, that's just, I would say, the starting situation. If you now look at the imbalanced market where the system is balanced by the TSO, um, this is the power request by the Dutch TSO on uh, this specific day. And we've scaled it down, of course, to the level of this uh, 25 houses. But we now have uh, tried to optimize the whole system by try to trying to sell the power generated in this uh, smart grid on this imbalance market. And the result looks as follows. What you see here is the green line is the realized power by the virtual power plant. And the red line was the calculated optimum 
um, to sell the power on, the, on this grid. And you see that as almost a perfect match between uh, the green line and the red line, and that's only for a system which I would say about 100 devices which are being installed now. So if you would imagine the situation where we do a large-scale rollout of these smart grids, then we really will be able to buy, build very efficient uh, large-scale po virtual power plants, and this, the match will be perfect. Um, so I think with this uh, demonstration, we really show how you can optimize a smart grid based on a market mechanism, allowing to optimize the system on behalf of each of the stakeholders in the grid. And we are making sure um, that uh, all the, the, the um, assets are being used in the most optimal way and really creating the internet of energy in this way. So here I would like to end my uh, talk and I thank you for your attention. If you want to have more information about smart grids, then visit our website www.smartgridsherpa.com.